Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. I have three anthuriums that I need to remove from sphagnum moss and put them in a nice chunky aerate mix. I have the Doriaki Silver, the Palatiflorum, as well as the Marmoratum. I'm going to be using a clear glass vessel. I have seen some people use it in the past with really good success. So I actually tried it with my Luxurian uh, Radican anthurium. It's actually getting a new leaf, uh, two new leaves actually. Uh, but check out these roots. I am so impressed how this no drainage uh, glass vessel method has worked out. So let's get started. I picked out three glass containers from the dollar store. They were two dollars each and the funny thing is is they're not perfect. Obviously they come from the dollar store but some of them on the shelf were like obviously out of shape like some were bowing on one side. They're not perfect. You can see this one's slightly irregular but that's okay. They're pretty cheap and these are perfect just because of um, how like I don't want any lips on the top or anything like that or any I just want a straight glass vessel And the reason for that is whenever I have to pull them out. Um, I don't want an irregular shaped uh, Container otherwise I'm gonna have to break it, but I do want to reuse these uh, once the uh, plants outgrow them So that's why I like these ones with the just straight edge today I'm going to be trying a very plants Molly's aeroid mix and there's a couple things that I like about this already without even opening up the bag. Uh, one is the bag itself. I love how they display the ingredients in the bag right on the bag itself. So this is their soilless potting uh, mix for indoor plants. Uh, another cool thing about this is they're actually a Canadian company. I am in Saskatchewan and this is, or they're based out of Quebec. Um, on the back, it has a list of ingredients. I'm not gonna run through it, but I, I like the last part here, the wetting agent. I'm assuming that's going to be water. So taking a peek inside the bag, this is what it looks like. It will definitely be a well draining soil. So let's take these anthuriums out of their containers or out of the sphagnum moss and uh, pot them up using this arid mix. I'm going to start off with my beautiful Doriaki Silver, which I got from North Shore Tropicals. If you know me or if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you will know that I don't like growing plants in sphagnum moss long term. I like to pull them out and put them in a nice chunky aeroid mix. I have kind of changed my tone with moss poles. I, I hated moss. I didn't want anything to do with sphagnum moss. But since having these, I don't know if you can see it in frame here, but these uh, plastic D-shaped moss poles, I now enjoy the moss poles. So today I've come prepared. I have my pencil ready, as well as my little spoon, which I use the end to remove plants. But I'm just gonna start by squeezing the side here and just see if it'll slide right out, which it does. Um, I do reuse sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss isn't cheap, so I like to save it and reuse it when I can, as long as there's no like pests or bugs or anything. I did fill up this uh, container or this pot with uh, room temperature water. I don't want uh, water that's too cold or too hot uh, where it uh, basically shocks the roots. So I'm just going to set this in here for a moment and just see if I can loosen up and remove some of the sphagnum moss. This one shouldn't be an issue just because it has some fairly large chunky roots. The issue with sphagnum moss, or the reason why I don't like it, is it's quite difficult to remove it from certain houseplants, like Hoyas in particular, where they have very small roots. It's difficult to kind of differentiate between sphagnum moss and those very small fibrous uh, Hoya roots. So a lot of times you feel like you're just pulling away at the sphagnum moss, but you're actually just <laughs> just trashing your plant and removing all the roots, but it's not terrible when you have a plant with thicker roots. So here's a smaller root, a very thin root, and you can see the difference between a sphagnum moss strand and a root. The root will be, um, the root should be white, and a lot of times the center portion of the sphagnum moss is brown. So I know this is a piece of moss and not just moss around a root so I can remove it. So that's how I kind of differentiate. So I just kind of go around the plant, uh, loosening up what I can, um, just being very gentle not to disturb the root system. So this one's actually coming apart quite nice. So it shouldn't be an issue. It's not the end of the world if you don't remove all the sphagnum moss, but the issue with that is sphagnum moss retains or holds onto moisture. I'm not too worried about it uh, with these thicker roots, but when you have a plant like a Hoya and you have very thin roots and it stays wet for too long, then that's how you end up with uh, rotten roots 
if it doesn't dry out fast enough. I did notice before I took this out of the pot, this plant is actually getting a new leaf. So I'm hoping it doesn't go into too much shock to the point where it gives me a deformed or gibbled up leaf there. But here's the roots looking absolutely fantastic, super healthy. There's no signs of any root rot or anything like that. Um, actually there is just right here, just a little mushy, just a little mushy section right there. So um, I'm not prepared, I gotta get my pruning shears. So this is the only spot right here, just one tiny little mushy root. I'm gonna cut that back to where it is white again. That looks like the only root that uh, had a little bit of rot on the end. The first thing I'm going to do is just size it up. So something like that should be okay. And you can see it will have enough clearance at the bottom. So I'm gonna put a bit of this mix in the bottom of the pot. And then I'll fill in the rest while holding the plant. That's typically how I like to pot my stuff up. Uh, something like that. And then I'm just going to add soil around the edges and I'll use my pencil to kind of poke down the mixture here as well. And then just using the pencil just to poke it down kind of around the roots, just trying to hold it upright in position. Obviously center in the glass container as well. Oops, don't damage the new growth. I guess I'll get my hand out of the way. After, I'm probably gonna give it a little bit of water here as well. And then that way you can see how it settles. I like the glass containers because you can see those big, thick, juicy roots. I, uh, I love that. That's why I like these clear orchid pots as well. You can see the, the roots kind of popping through or growing. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more just on this side right here. Um, just because it's a little unstable or unsteady. So, and I want this stem or these, I want the roots from the stem growing into the mixture as well. So look at that, you can already see a root. I, I just love the thick um, roots on, on houseplants. Using the pencil just helps me fill in any little air gaps or air pockets there with with the mixture here. So overall it's settling nice. You can see there's a couple little air pockets at the bottom. So you just use the pencil and just kind of poke that down. See how easy that fills in those gaps. It doesn't have to be like super packed down. I just don't want there to be any of those air pockets like right here as well. It does have a root there. So I have to be careful not to crunch those roots and it will settle a little bit when you do water it. Add a little bit more on this side, make sure all those roots are covered up and everything is stable. There, I think it looks absolutely perfect. Okay, the next one here is my beautiful strap leaf uh, Anthurium palatiflorum. I absolutely love how long these leaves get. It's currently on my plant shelf right back here, so I want it to kind of cascade down, uh, just allowing the leaves to just kind of hang and drape down. This one makes me a little bit nervous because this was a wish list plant of mine. I don't want to damage the roots. Um, it does have some pretty decent sized roots on the side here as well. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that I don't damage any of the roots. Same thing, I'm just gonna squeeze this. Might have to use the end of my spoon here to coax it out, there you go. And some of the moss is just falling off already. This is damp. And I can see a couple areas of rot on this, which doesn't make me happy. And I'm glad I'm taking it out of the sphagnum moss. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of pruning here. So I'm really happy that I took it out of the moss. Now my concern is, or uh, my concern was, the pot is fairly small. So I didn't, well, I know there wasn't a large root system on this plant. So I was kind of worried about uh, potting it in that uh, larger glass container. I don't think it's gonna to be too large. I never like to pot anything up in too large of a pot. I'm just going to have to be cautious about how much I water it. I don't want to like completely soak it. 
I may only give um, like maybe the top half water and I'll just let the rest kind of drain down. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a, a test for me. If you have any experience with root rot, you'll know, or the common um, source of root rot is a, a potting soil or mixture or whatever medium you have it in is staying wet for too long, but you can actually get root rot from if you let your plants stay uh, dry for too long. So especially with Hoyas, like, or I guess plants in general that have uh, very thin roots, if they dry out, they basically die. And then when you give it water, it, uh, it soaks the soil and then those dry roots basically turn to mush and then that just leads to root rot when those uh, dry dead roots uh, turn to mush. So it does have a nice root system, but you can see, whoops, that's just my chair falling apart again. There are a lot of brown roots, whereas you want to see um, either white or these like nice green ones. So here's a nice root, so that's a perfect root, but this one that you can pull right off, that is a rotten piece. So I'm gonna have to get my pruning shears here again and snip away at some of these rotten roots as I don't want the, uh, the rot to um, progress to these uh, healthy roots. Okay, so I grabbed my pruning shears. Now I'm just gonna find all of these rotten roots. So this one still looks good. You can see these guys right here is the group that has rotted. And I'm, I don't want to cut anything off that I don't have to, but it looks like um, this little section, that one just fell right off. Uh, this right here, I'm going to cut back to right there. So this, that's all rotten. And okay, everything on this one looks decent. This root right here. Follow it back to the, the large green root right there. Cut that off. So there's a rotten root. This spot right here. This root looks okay. It's got some rot at the end, but there's a damaged section right here and this portion has rotted. So I'm gonna cut just above that to a healthy green part. Okay, so here's the glass container. It will have a lot of room for the roots to grow. I'm gonna place it just slightly back from the edge, maybe something like that. And now I gotta find my soil. I guess it's a soilless mixture. I gotta find the aeroid mix. And then I'm gonna add some in the bottom here first. This mixture has a very woody smell. It's actually quite pleasant. It's like when you um, smell cedar. It's not overpowering by any means, but it just feels like I'm in the woods right now. Okay, right, so I'm gonna hold this stem like that in position. Actually, I might take a little bit of this out just so those roots don't get crumpled up. So something like that. And now I'm just gonna add a mix in. I'm just again using my pencil just to kind of poke it down around the roots. This is actually going really smooth. So I'm happy with how it's going. It's a little off center. There you go, you get back. Just like that. I'm gonna add some around the front. It kind of migrated a little bit closer to the front than what I wanted, but that's okay. I'm not gonna take it out of the pot right now. I might be able to actually just push it back a bit with this. There you go. I'm gonna put some at the front. There, I'll put a nice chunk right there. I'm just gonna pack that down. I am a little upset with myself right now. I have it positioned properly. I just kind of moved it back a little bit, but in the process of doing that, I snapped this leaf on the edge of the uh, glass container here. So it snapped right there. Oh, that's so sad. I'm gonna lose this leaf eventually, but that's okay. It is one of the older ones 
and uh, yeah, that's just the way she goes. Here is the finished product, and I think it looks absolutely awesome in this clear container, and I can't wait uh, to see these uh, roots popping through. If you are interested in trying out the Very Plants Air Ride Mix, they were kind enough to uh, give you guys a discount code of 10% off, so you can go check out their website, put in the code Everything Plants, and that'll get you 10% uh, off of any of their products. They do have a couple other um, different types of soil, one being a succulent mix that I am excited to try out as well. I do have some other links in the description of my videos for other products and discount codes that I use. Um, there's some for Mother Grow Lights, um, the Soltech Grow Lights, now the uh, Very Plants uh, soil mixture. So if you want to save some money, then go check out um, the links down in the description of this video. I do get a small commission if you guys use these links and discount codes and that sort of thing. So it not only helps me out, but it gives you a bit of a discount there as well. So just a bit of a disclaimer. I will never recommend a product if I personally don't use it. So um, everything in those links I personally use or have tried out. So yeah, go check it out. Last one here. Uh, this crispy mess, um, it's the marmoratum. Uh, the moss is really dry right now. So again, this is one that I've been having some difficulty with uh, keeping consistently watered. And you can see it, it has lost a leaf. Let's pull this out and get it out of this moss. Where's my spoon? I'm definitely going to have to let this one soak. And I'm really curious to see what the roots look like on this one. Come on. I'm just gonna use my pencil to, to poke the bottom. Oh, I think I see your roots. So this might actually be, uh, yep. Yeah. I don't wanna say root bound. Yep, yeah, probably. It's got some, I guess, encircling roots. So I'm glad I took this out. I'm just gonna put it in the water, let it soak for a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my pencil. Actually, I'm just gonna, right now, just cut off these lower leaves. Don't need them. This one's looking crispy too, so let's see if this one will just pluck right off. Yeah, that one just pulls right off. And I'm just lightly providing a little bit of downward pressure just to help untangle those roots. And hopefully the, uh, the plant responds well to being in the new container and I can get leaves that aren't deformed. I'm gonna cut this one off too. Lots of roots on this one. This one's awesome. It's got a, a thicker stem at the top, so it's got um, a little puny stem at the bottom. It's gonna soak that. Just kind of slightly agitating it as well, and just pulling away, just pulling away at the moss here. Kind of scraped away at most of the moss, but I just want to show this right here. I will not be saving this sphagnum moss, and I'm not too sure what this is. Look at all these little balls. Uh, so here's fertilizer stuff, like these are little slow release fertilizer, but what on earth are these little round, they're kind of squishy things. I hope they're not eggs of some sort. I have not seen any pests on this plant, but uh, this guy is definitely going to get a rinse. I don't know what those things are. I don't know if you can see them. These little pellets. Yeah, not saving that. A little change of plans with this one. See, it has a very large root system. I did take it over to the bathroom to rinse off all those little pellets. If I use this glass container, you can see I'm basically just stuffing all of these roots in there and it's, yeah, it has no room to grow. So I'm actually going to be using a larger plastic orchid pot. You can see it has a nice amount of room for the roots to expand into. So that's what I'm going to use for this one. And hopefully that solves the issue of it just drying out way too fast. Um, so all I'm going to do is just hold it in place. Actually, I can just probably dump this right in. Just holding it like that. I'm gonna pot it or seed it a little bit lower. Just making sure it's in the middle of the pot. It's stable. Pack down the soil around the roots. I 
the new growth or the new leaf uh, popping out of the stem here, it's already dying back. So that's why I wanted to get this one out as soon as I could, just so that whenever it decides to put out another new leaf, it's not all deformed and messed up. I have yet to get a decent leaf on this one and I've had it for, for a while now. So it's a little bit frustrating trying to figure this one out, but I think it was simply just, it was too small of a pot and it was getting too dry too fast. Something like that. This one was actually quite difficult to get all the moss off of uh, the roots. There were so many roots and yeah, they were entangled. So I actually did uh, <laughs> destroy a large amount of the roots, but it still has a lot of roots there. Okay, I think I just made a mistake. So, on the bottom, <laughs> I just, <coughs> oh, I think I swallowed a piece of bark or something. Okay, so at the bottom here, you can see there's uh, not much soil and it's all roots. So, I'm gonna have to adjust something here. I'm just gonna pull up on the cutting a little bit and just Get the soil down there a bit further. There, that should be better. Now I can push down on the cutting. Okay, my mistake, I should have added, okay, I'm just gonna take it out. Redo. Okay, I'm gonna do about a quarter. Okay, so I, I should have known better, but now I'm gonna put all the roots in like that. Now it has some room to grow down, whereas I just placed the plant in, just trying to be quick about it, and I made a mistake. It happens. So now I'm just gonna put all that soil back in, like that. Now I can use my pencil to fill in any air pockets. There, that's better. That makes me happy. It's a little off center again. I don't know, kind of drives me nuts, but I'm not gonna remove it again. There, that's better. Now those roots can grow down into the soil as opposed to just sitting at the bottom, all kind of all coiled up like I had it. Okay, now for the watering test. I fully expect the soil, or the sorry, the water just to drain right through the soil. Actually, it's not, it's a soilless mixture, so there's no soil in there. Okay, so just, I'm gonna soak it. And it should come right out the bottom. Just like that. That is a well-draining soil. I will be watering the Doriaki Silver, but just because the Palatiflorum had a little bit of root rot, I'm gonna give it like maybe a day just for the ends of those uh, cut roots to kind of heal and uh, kind of close up before I give it some water. But for this one, I'm just gonna see how this one drains. You can see it's just draining right down the side. I don't want like a ton of water pooling at the bottom. So I'm just gonna like tilt it to the side, see if anything, there's just like a little bit that pools just at the bottom. So I'm gonna give it maybe a little bit more water. This might actually be good for my misting bottle. So I went and got my pump action garden sprayer. This way it can allow me to um, equally water or spray water on the top of the soil just for kind of like equal distribution, I guess. Let's see if this drains through. You see it draining down. A little bit of pooling of water at the bottom now. So I'm gonna let that soak in and that will be all the water I'm gonna give it for now. I can water it again here in a couple days. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Just spray off the leaves here, just like that. Gotta clean up my table now, that's okay. 
So yeah, that's how I'm going to water them. And I like that you can see the moisture on the side. And again, just doing the little tilt test. There's not a ton of water pooling. You can see maybe a little bit there. So that's all I'm going to allow at the bottom. And then that uh, mixture should just kind of soak or wick it up. Um, but yeah. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Don't forget, if you want to try out this soil mixture, just use Everything Plants for 10% off of uh, Very Plants, uh, Molly's Aeroid Mix, as well as their other soil types. So go check it out. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Take care.